Good evening, friends. Stephen Benoon here with Israeli News Live. And I have, uh, I can't even say a special guest. I'm talking about a phenomenal guest here. And I know uh, Steve, Stephen Jackson may not want me to say it like that, but I've been watching his channel now here for, for several months, uh, thanks to Elizabeth, uh, our, our translator. Elizabeth's got so many hats that she wears here at Israeli News Live. But she first shared with me uh, Stephen Jackson's channel, which is JWTV uh, on YouTube, and uh, it just Steve does phenomenal work. I mean, I mean, he covers a, a, a wide uh, spectrum of information uh, on his channel there. But when he gets into the issues on uh, on on these world events, things that are happening, uh, it is absolutely amazing and i and i'm going to share this channel with you jwtv is j workouts tv and uh just to give you some of the titles of his latest videos it's going to hit you get ready it's happening october you must know world alert it's begun you must be ready world alert uh all three of these videos are just phenomenal not to mention just many many other videos so uh, with, without any further ado, Stephen, thank you so much for being willing to join us here on Israeli News Live and uh, to talk about some of these amazing subjects that, that, that you speak about. No problem. Thank you for having me on today. And all these subjects we're talking about really is critical to our awareness today that we as a people literally look into these things ourselves after we talk about this today. And then talk to your family about it, because the only way we can change the reality we live in, the only way we can change our consciousness is if we together start making it happen. It doesn't matter even if it's a toxic pattern that you feel like you have ingraining you, we can all beat these things. It just takes us as a whole unit to actually focus and realize we're up against something much deeper than we know. And once we realize those things, we take that in and then we fight this battle together as a collective unit. You're not alone. Thank you, Steve. Steve, in your latest video, it's going to hit. Uh, you get ready. Uh, oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Is that the right one? I'm, I'm, yeah, I think that's the right one there. This is, you know, you're showing the earthquakes in there. You're showing the uh, the the animals going haywire, uh, things like that. Uh, the birds are uh, sitting there watching that earlier today, and. Can you elaborate on some of that information? And we're going to get a little bit deeper tonight, but just starting off with that video there. Uh, and and I, I was actually just in a meeting yesterday uh, with some folks there in Washington, D.C. And one of the meetings that was held at the Pentagon just recently was a discussion that the volcanoes and stuff like that, earthquakes, all of that is starting to all heat up once again. So if you can, if you could speak on some of those things that you shared in that video there. Okay, so what we notice that a lot of people haven't been pinpointing is HARP has 13 experiments. They started it off just about, I think, two days ago. And so HARP has started to do moon bouncing. They're also doing something to do with asteroid uh, drills and stuff like that, too. But supposedly they're doing moon bouncing, and I think they're using about 3.6 megawatts, they said, to basically bounce it off the moon. Now you gotta understand that the moon affects a lot of things with the ocean. And so uh, magnetically we get affected by all these things and earthquakes, all these things can be affected when you're messing with the moon and you're messing with the high atmospheric levels. So this, this is what's going on. And even today, you can go probably look up ham radio uh, operators showing the frequencies that are being shot out, but you have to go to beam.com because if you do it on Google, you're not gonna see it because Bing has not delisted everybody. So if you was to put in HARP 2022 on Bing, you would see October 2022, you would see people with ham radio operators showing you exactly what HARP is doing. So these experiments are affecting our environment and uh, the animals attacking the people's cars, that's not normal. Uh, that video was just posted recently. It was somebody from uh, TikTok. You see a lot of people put those videos out. And the birds is actually coming in and clashing at his car. So this is not normal activity. We have the snow, uh, the crabs disappearing, the Alaskan crabs disappearing in billions of numbers. 
what is happening in our ocean? This is the big question. It's a disturbance, I believe, happening from what we're experiencing, not just from HARP, but from this deployment of artificial suns. And, you know, people's shoes melting earlier this year in China when they step on our parking lot. I mean, if we really think we're in the same world we grew up in, then I think we need to reevaluate re life. Whether from, even when I was a kid, like I said, I'm only 30 years old at the point, uh, about to be at the end of the year. When I was a kid, I watch weather patterns every day. So this is not something that I just get up and talk about. This is something I lived. So, and even one time, uh, lightning struck my umbrella. Thank goodness I didn't die, but that's another story. The thing is, the weather, we no longer have normal weather patterns anymore. And if you've been observing the weather for the last 10, 20 years or 25 years, you would know exactly what I'm talking about. The weather, you can't predict summer anymore. You can't predict winter anymore. And so with people putting these objects in the atmosphere, and like I said, that telescope, the guy shows the telescope and he says, that's not the sun because there's another object behind the sun. What are we actually seeing here? So if they're briefing in, D in D.C. about these objects and everything else, what are they missing? And uh, why aren't they understanding how high frequency activity affects the world? And we deploy all these things and think it's, oh, it's all fine. You know, everybody will be all right. But really, are we are we out for genocide or are we truly out to help the population? And at most points, you already know what's going on, that they're not out to actually help the population. So these experiments at HARP are going to be going all the way up to the October 28th. So if you're experiencing some weird feeling, you're seeing your animals acting weird, best thing for you to do is understand that maybe you can frequency shield, maybe you got some EMF shielding, maybe you got something that can potentially protect you from these waves. Because I've went through Texas before and I've, I've, I've felt waves hitting my brain. I'm not lying to you. And I got a headache. It was a massive headache. And what I did, I had the Mylar aluminum blanket and I actually put it around my skull. You can laugh all you want, but I'm telling you, this stuff actually stops frequencies from, from hitting my brain. Because, you know, once it permeates the blood-brain barrier, you get that electric conductivity inside of the brain. You can look all these studies up on your own. But they showed in the University of Hebrew in Israel, they showed that when people are close to cell towers, the layer of the dermis can absorb all the electromagnetic frequency when you're sweating. So your pores open up, and if you're working out next to some cell tower, you need to reevaluate that too, because they said this energy is making humans more conductive. And you got to ask the question, okay, if you're more conductive, you're more manipulative under a magnetic field that doesn't even exist, an artificial magnetic field that's happening this year. That That's amazing. All right, let's, let's, we're going to go back up a little bit and, and go through some of this. And this is why I say, guys, as you're listening to uh, Stephen Jackson speak about these things, he does his homework. I mean, just just five minutes listening to him right now, you know this man does his homework on what he's talking about. Uh, now, Steve, actually, and I'm going to pull this video up. I, I think I can screen share it and show it too at the same time. Uh, all right, let me let me pull back over to this to this to to the thing. I'm kind of bear with me, guys, because I'm going to take and do this all at one time. Um, let's see. Gosh, where we got? Let's see. Maybe I can. Maybe I cannot. Uh, let's see if this will work. All right. Can we see that on there, Steve? Can you actually see my screen there? This is this is Steve's channel. Yep. Is it showing up on That's your end? Okay, great. All right. Now, let me just. I'm gonna see if I can back this up without messing it up, so you can hear what the Steve just was. Uh, he just aired this. This is a, a gentleman. Uh, the, and, and I think Steve told me we don't know for sure exactly his original source for this, but he goes up underneath his telescope where it's under a blanket and he's looking at the sun. Let me so let me back out. See if I can, I can give you after the show or, or underneath the show, we can post a link to the TikTok. I actually found it. Oh, great, great, excellent. All right, so I'm going to back out just enough where you can see what he's doing here. Here we go. Here, and I'm going to play this clip real quick. And because Steve was talking about this briefly, and I want to tell you a little bit more about what I found out about it. Let's take a look and see what we got. Now we are looking at the sun. But that is not. We get it right there and I'm going to pause. There we go right there. That is not the sun. All right. So 
what this gentleman is here has got, Steve, if you can kind of explain that for the people, what they're looking at real quick, and then I'll comment on what uh, I found out from uh, Washington on this particular issue. All right, so basically he looks up, he has his telescope, and he sees this huge big aurora supposedly around the sun, right? But what we're looking at right now, we see a, we see a little dot that looks like it could be the sun and then you see a huge black black object behind the sun and so in reality i don't know what it is but I'm, I'm i'm guessing that it's an artificial sun or is it a projection i'm not sure but i would love to hear your take on this because this is critical to understand what the heck is going on in our atmosphere right now exactly all right so what what happened was when i actually saw this I, I reached out uh, to, to a, a physicist up in Washington, D.C., and I, add, I, I actually showed him your video. And I said, this is what uh, Stephen Jackson has put out. And uh, I said, what do you make of this? So he's looking at it, and he tells me like this here, and I actually wrote some of the notes down what he says. He says, we have a lot of activity, high-intensity flares and eruptions, uh, that are happening on the sun right now, he said, but he said, although it's not my area of expertise, he said, I do know the guys that specifically are dealing with what's going on on the sun. He said, now, the bad thing is, he said, you generally get vague responses. And it's because what it is, is they're not willing to tell us what's really going on. He said, the last exactly. thing he said that I spoke with them, he said, they were kind of speaking in riddles and it's mainly because they want him to understand, but they're having to be careful about how they say it so that they're not guilty of, oh, we've just, you know, this is classified information. We're not supposed to say it. He said, but what I, I speaking, Yeah. So he said, what I came away with was that they're, he said, they're looking at the sun is going to eject an object from it. They're, they believe it'll happen around 2030. He said, but it's going to be ejected from the sun and it's going to come towards Earth. He said, as if it were a giant meteorite or an asteroid or something of that effect there. Now, I don't think, Steve, though, what he's talking about is that like, in other words, it's not like if some big chunk of rock going to come flying out of the sun, but rather the way I took it is that something is orbiting the sun or near the sun, but the sun is going to cause it to catapult forward and come towards us. So that's the way I took it when we when I shared that with him. Uh, now, keeping in mind, we have talked about, we talked extensively because of the, I do work on the project of Planet X in the regards of ancient documents uh, dealing with the fact that who lives on Planet X are a bunch of reptilians they're actually called, uh, they're not, they're, they're, they're related to the reptilians, but they're called, um, oh gosh, I'm blank on the name on it now, but, but they're like giant reptilians. Pardon me? Giant reptilians. Yeah, like giant giant reptilians. Yes, yes. Uh, and, and there's a specific name for them. Uh, but we know that the, that the system is supposed to, well, actually, this was the time of year that it was supposed to enter our solar system was the fall of this year. I actually reported that back, I think, in February. Uh, but with that being stated, Steve, uh, what is, what's your thought on just this comment that he made on it? Cause I mean, there, again, these are probabilities, so we don't know for sure, but I don't know if any of your research, if there's something that that might make you think about something. Well, they said an object will be basically coming towards us. You know, I mean, it makes me think about when they shut down the solar observatory, Maybe that object was there again, and maybe it was doing something more different that was going to cause mass panic. This time, this footage is allowed to be out because it's not going to cause mass panic because most people don't even get what's going on, right? Except for if you take it to a physicist or somebody else. So 2030, you know, I was looking at it. They would talk about this, this evil uh, twin star of the sun called Nemesis, which is actually, I told you, is a, actually a Greek, an ancient Greek goddess, which is a goddess of vengeance. So, like you said, if this is the Planet X or stuff like that, uh, if anything, if it could be either or, it could be Planet X, it could be that we have some twin of the sun, 
that causes, and you know, if that shows up, it causes total cataclysm, whatever it's called, this nemesis thing. Now, that's another thing that was a theory in my mind. I'm not saying that's confirmed, but this thing getting close to us just means that something is on the way and the governments know that it's on the way and they're trying to tell people, hey, we got to get you to live on the ground. Do you understand that they already came out and said in Asia and Africa, we're going to be convincing people to live on the ground because it's going to be so hot. And I believe they're going to be doing that with the artificial sun. So maybe this is another point that I want to talk about. If, they're, if governments are getting ready to try to impose that, because if you look at the new UN report, they say a lot of areas will be so hot that it will be uninhabitable. So if that be the case, there has to be some back agenda with that. Why do they need us not on the surface anymore? And why specifically in Asia and Africa? Because like I said, all 500 miles off the coast of South Africa was the vortex in the Gulf of Aden. Remember that vortex in the ocean? And that vortex, was basically guarded by a bunch of militaries. They came out and tried to have a cover story about pirates in the sea. So all I'm saying is those areas are really significant landmarks that they want not habited by people. So specifically, they're using artificial sun more and it seems like projecting more in that area. Obviously, we're not, people are not walking down the street in America and their shoes are melting within one minute. Not yet, but I mean, if we keep going on this road, maybe they'll turn it up even more. I'm not sure. But this whole system right now that we're being played upon about how the sun is just, you know, getting so high and everybody just has to deal with it. And it's, you know, oh, it's just climate change. You know, this is not the scenario. And of course, they don't want to hear that. There's many factors that play into it. But I've noticed they didn't ban any of the videos I put out because I lay out evidence telling them exactly what's going on and they don't try to say oh well this is misinformation or this is because i'm actually bringing out information and i've even fact checked the fact checkers and they don't come after me at all because a lot of people on these platforms back down no i found out when you actually double down and you show the information and you, they're like whoa this, he's crazy he, he's not going to stop and it'll come a point maybe when they do feel like they want to come after me and take it down but other than that i'm not backing down i'm coming forward i'm going to keep presenting the information and together we have to figure this out. That's why it's important that the, the information you got and the information I give in the community globally, we need to figure this out. And if people have more knowledge, they know more physicists, they should bring it forward and say, hey, what is this? What are we dealing with? Because I feel like behind the scenes, somebody will maybe secretly tell somebody something and say, hey, don't use my name or something like that. And then we might get this information maybe before 2030. Because by 2025, they have an agenda to like basically displace millions and billions of us just using this. Think about it. The catastrophe has already gotten higher with floods and everything else. Yes. So I told you about a smart island plan where basically off it's a smart island that China owns over there in the Bahamas. And the U.S. government at the same time. So all the coastlines of America is going to be every coastline. And you can look at the future Navy's map and stuff like that. They show you how it's going to be water all through America. Those people will be given an option to evacuate to islands where they're telling you it's luxurious, you'll be fine, but you're going to get on a smart island and it's going to be a smart camp ran by China in the UN documents. You can look up the documents where China runs the smart camps. And so you think you're going to be getting away from something and they're helping you. It's no different than the FEMA camps. I was in a FEMA trailer. They put us in there. That was the first time in my life I ever passed out. So all I'm saying, I've never passed out. I even did mixed martial arts. Nobody knocked me out, thank God, because I always said in my mind, nobody's knocking me out but God. And everybody laughed at me. But it was true. That was the reality. So I think the person who believes, uh, the person, like they say, it's a quote, uh, the one that believes they can and the one that believes they can't is true. Wherever you believe is the truth. So again, I'm not saying believe in falsity, but I'm saying like your mind has the power. The power of belief brings you to far levels in the body, in the mind, and spirit. Not believing falsities, but bringing yourself into a higher consciousness of thinking. That's what I'm saying right now. But anyway, getting back to the whole situation here. Okay, here's what I want to touch on when you were talking about the uh, China and, and Africa and the temperatures and stuff heating up. I don't know if you know this or not, Steve, but the... From, from meetings that I've been in, and I actually went out uh, to Dulce, New Mexico, where we have a secret base out there. Uh, not, I didn't go actually in the base. That's, I don't have the clearance for that. 
but uh, we met, I met there in 18 hours of marathon meetings and we were discussing the alien agenda that's going on. Uh, and one of the things that was brought up was the fact that they're terraforming the earth for these reptilians that are coming. And they don't like, they don't like trees. They, they want a desert hot region. Now, I find the fact that you mentioned China and Africa very interesting for the reason being is that those are the two areas that we know that are supposed to survive uh, this coming of Nemesis or Planet X or whatever. They're supposed to fare better. This is also the reason why Russia, the United States, uh, and, and China have been kind of battling over certain territories of Africa because they're going to need places for, for, for relocation of their of their elite, not their civilizations. The only one that seems to care about this, their own civilization seems to be Putin. Uh, and, and I don't consider him the knight in shining armor, but for some reason, he does seem to care about his people more than uh, our, our country cares about our people, for sure, or China, for that matter. Now, even though China is supposed to survive because the landmass is thicker, it's still supposed to take a pretty hard hit uh, from what's going on there. Uh, so that's something there that, that I'm aware of on that. And also, I was told uh, uh, last night in our meetings that we had that uh, I shared with them your information on the artificial sun, China's artificial sun. I was told that China is the most advanced uh, country in the world when it comes to the artificial sun and the capabilities that they have and that they use it as a weapon. And just what you're saying, I was told, I said, well, who are they using it on? He said, well, believe it or not, he said, their own people. Imagine that. What's your thought, Steve? Well, even in a secret releasing of the files when they were saying about, they were talking about the invasion of Taiwan, they were saying they were willing to absorb a strike from U.S. if something was to happen. That shows that their population is expendable to them. But it was a movie that uh, my fiance showed me the other night. I forget what it's called. It had Arnold Schwarzenegger, but they go outside. And we were talking about the artificial sun, and, and she was like, look at this clip. The guy goes outside. I think supposedly they're in, like, Jupiter or another place. And he just, ah, like his eyeball starts popping out. And it's like, he just is like, what? I was like, this looked like if they turned up the artificial sun and then they were just, to, just able to fry the population. Because honestly, they do have that ability. That's not a scare tactic or nothing like that. I don't think they would do that. But you just never know. Because they wouldn't want to out flat scare people like that. That would then get people not to, uh, it would be hard to take out more people, I guess, because people would hide out, I guess. Uh, but the the bigger the bigger part to this about China and, and the landmass that's interesting you say that so they're fighting for position over there also the U S troops are over there in Africa right now too they're fighting for positions over there because not just resources we're talking a huge agenda coming where certain parts of the land and regions are going to be needed for survivability that's what we're talking about you're saying now and so with that being said I have to ask another question. Okay, is that the only region that they think is going to be survivable? What about the region in America? Aren't they still trying to split land over here so that they can um and, and notice something about America? They're so hush mouth on their artificial sun. Because we know they have some advanced technology, but maybe they did siphon off a lot of that technology in the uh, 49, uh, what was it under Mao Zedong and all that stuff? A lot of that the technology went over them, got shifted over. But the thing is, it's like this is my big 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 piece of information that I'm kind of like looking into. I'm trying to put the pieces together that not just our health is going to be affected by this, but the regions of land, the drying up of land. And I was asking a question like the Euphrates River, if it dries up, it's supposed to be fallen angels that's going to come from under that river. So my other question was the terraforming of the earth is happening. Okay, if they release fallen ones, that's already given one population over to basically two thirds of Earth supposedly supposed to be taken out, right? So that's already bringing out a new playing field for whatever beings they want. And then all the carbon is being sucked on the ground. And another question I, I put out of was that, okay, if they're sucking all this carbon in the ground, it's either one, 
they are going to take over the top surface layer and then force us to live below. While they're putting carbon down there, we're thinking like, oh, well, they're just trying to kill us, take all the air, but they're trying to force us underground and then let these beings live above. It's a really crazy thing to think about. But however, they have come out and said we're terraforming Earth and they just, you seen the White House just came out and said they're going to go ahead and improve that plan for the solar uh, radiation management. It was a new report came out because first it got blocked in the beginning of the year. They, they said it was blocked. Uh, Bill Gates got it blocked. But now they're saying, no, we're going to go ahead with it again. But meanwhile, we've been constantly getting sprayed every single day. So who knows if the project is already going on? You probably would know. But if you do know, maybe let us a little bit on the intel if you could. The, the one thing that's interesting that you brought up is the fact, Steve, about the um, forcing us underground and these entities coming above ground. Uh, and one thing that I've known for quite some time now is that the reason why uh, the reptilians, for example, live underground, and, and of course we have a lot of alien species that live in the oceans as well, is because biologically we can't coexist. Uh, they have viruses that are toxic to us and vice versa, we have viruses that are toxic to them. Uh, and although you do have abductions that take place, things like that, that's something that I know uh, secondhand knowledge, but I know that uh, that was done under Eisenhower. There was an agreement that we would turn a blind eye to the abductions. Uh, allegedly, they would return the abductees, but it, you know, we don't know if they really ever tell us the truth or not, but supposedly it was reproduction purposes. But we, I know that they have discovered that uh, it wasn't so much reproduction that they were looking at, but trying to find a way to either coexist, and that's not been very successful. Um, and and I, I, because we're going to air this on YouTube, I'm not going to go into the whole thing that we know that just happened the last couple of years. But I will say this, so people already know, and I know you understand what I'm talking about. The thing that they used on the whole global, or wanted to use on the whole global population was a project that began back in World War II. And that initially started as a way that they thought would make it to where we could coexist together. Um, it failed, and I got brought into that project uh, or not that project itself, but to know more about it, because the government wanted to know when the last time Planet X passed the Earth, uh, roughly they were looking at the one 3,500 years ago uh, during the time of Moses, was there an altercation of the DNA of the human race? Uh, and what evidence do we have to support it? And I asked the question, why would you guys want to know this? They said, because we just got in from the Vatican, uh, a, a, a particular entity that had died, and we were doing the autopsy, and we noticed that the DNA had been manipulated, and that little thing that they were placing in people, we'll just say it like that, uh, does the exact same thing, the same thing we saw in this alien entity we know happens in the human race based on this program that they did to inoculate an entire planet, so to speak. Uh, so, but the question was, were they, were they transforming the DNA for a purpose of survivability? Uh, is it so that we could coexist or was it for a more nefarious reason? Uh, they don't know, or at least they didn't tell me the answer to that, but they wanted me to research it. And I did find 3,500 years ago. I, I can't go into that as of right now. Uh, I could tell you a little bit more privately about it, but yes, DNA was manipulated during that time of the exodus of Egypt, believe it or not. And you know, the DNA manipulation has been an uh, ongoing crisis, even if you look back, you know, years ago, supposedly we've been manipulated so many times. Our DNA, supposedly, when people are, oh, no, it's not true. Well, think about it. If, the, if you read a book that tells you that the fallen ones made it with humans, that's telling you our DNA was already changed right there. So all I'm saying is now that we're in this part of our phases of life, what is the DNA alterations really for, like you're saying? Because 
the survivability rate, maybe they need to use, you know, a lot of the hybrids, you know, have human bodies. And maybe they're realizing that something like maybe this atmosphere and all this stuff is changing the DNA and a lot of stuff around us. And maybe they think that if they change our DNA, they can still use the vessel. It's no different than a parasite and a host. And so the thing is, is that's what they're doing here. They're using a lot of bodies and they're actually coming out and walking in daylight because it's the ones that can't walk in the light and it's the ones that can't. They don't want to live under forever. They want the terraforming to happen. They want it to be dark skies. But however, obviously they have artificial sun. So do they really want to have dark skies? And then a Dyson sphere is what they're supposed to be trying to use around the sun. Uh, you know, it's supposedly a lot of other different advanced civilizations were using these things where they was harnessing energy from the sun but they was putting this huge structure around the sun so that they can power entire civilizations. You know, the power of America is really not the highest power civilization that we had in history, but that's probably for a reason as well. We don't know all the advanced te technologies because if you look up Invention Act of Secrecy, I think that was 1951, if I'm not mistaken, but just look up Invention Act of Secrecy. And there's so much advanced technology that's already coming out that we know zero about. They literally have planes suspended in the atmosphere for like over months and months of time. And one of them is a sky hotel. As a matter of fact, the U.S. military has one. China has one. And so why are they suspending these planes in the atmosphere? What, are they, what do they need this technology for? Is during this crazy cataclysmic moment, uh, are they going to need to be in the sky? And they got nuclear powered, you know, fuel. So they don't need to go and fuel up anymore. They could just sit in the air and just constantly get it recycled. The only problem is, where are you going to do with the nuclear, uh, the, the the last break off of nuclear situation that you got to like, I don't know, they dump it in the ocean most of the time. And that's another thing, man. Like, how are you going to maintain society if you're dumping all this toxic stuff into the ocean? It's happened off the coast of Florida. It's happened off the coast of California. Our wildlife and our sea life, I always thought, okay, if you want to conquer a civilization, maybe you need to poison out the entire ocean so we can't fish anymore. So we can't do the normal activities that can keep us as individuals. Most of the trees around you are like usually either female or male in a lot of these big states because they don't want it to reproduce food anymore. And that's the big thing. So learning to be able to just navigate the reality you live in. And it's so much harder to grow uh, plants on the outside. That's why I always grow plants inside if I do. I, growing outside is really almost like honestly with the nano and everything is not even really safe anymore. You know, so the thing is this future plan that we're dealing with is going to escalate probably within these next, uh, and it's in the October 25th is supposed to be like some eclipse and other things starting to come this month. So I think a lot of other events will basically move from there. And you notice the reptilians like to come from underground and a lot of areas on eclipses too. Uh, if you did any studies on all those different moments of what happens during those times. So, it's really insane that the society we live in, everything we were taught growing up, you're like, oh, it's just shaking in. Like, oh, that's real? Like, all this stuff is real? You, When you see the reality for what it is, you still understand that you don't know half of what's going on. So the mission forward here is for them to continue to keep us debating and being manipulated. But at the same time, we're actually gaining new knowledge here. And I think that's why this whole shutdown of the society and system and everything else is, is accelerating. They know something's coming, but they also feel the conscious level that we're reaching is also heightening. And that means a conscious shift is going to happen that they can't basically afford in this reality. Think about it. They've been plotting this empire for millions of years, most likely. Millions of years. But one thing that always happens when evil rules the world, things collapse. And we have to reset and restart again. So that's the big thing here. Will there be a reset this time or will there be something else that happens from this merging and changing of DNA? And I think this time they're trying to make something where if a reset happens, they could potentially be the ones who could still use the vessels, use the vessels of us. And then at the same time while they're using the vessels, they can try to get God to probably like think like, well, we're all falling and we've taken over this creature. But I think that even if they did that, our our consent right now is important. If you tell right now in the universe that you don't consent to this, 
there has to be some repercussions for that. Because right now, a lot of people are, are understanding, like, what, what's happening with karma? Why is Bill Gates and all these people not getting their karma? Why is all this still happening? How come good people get their karma so quick? It's a crazy, twisted reality. I don't have all the answers. But in these next coming years together, we're about to see some of the biggest things. And I'm going to continue to break it down right here. And then I'll be on this regular news live and I'll be on JWTV and we'll continue to give dire information on these reports. And I'm looking into some more high, high critical things that right now I'm not going to talk about because I still have to put some pieces together, but it's definitely going to be even more interesting. Like it's really a lot to absorb. So over the weekend, it's like I have to take off, give my mind a break. And then I come back, recalibrate, and then new things start coming to me. Like when, when the knowledge is meant to be put out to the civilization, it comes to you. It doesn't, it's not like I always have to just look. Most of the time this stuff comes to me and it's just in my mind. It's just a thought process. It's not that like I'm getting some secret information being to my head. It's that I'm in the critical thought process that helps me understand more about the situation. So the next phase of it is what do you think we're, where do you think we're going from here? Well, I, I tell you what, I know what we're going to probably have to do is go ahead and call this a wrap up tonight, Steve, but we have got to pick this back up again. I mean, uh, now it is people's attention span is only so long, but I can sit here and listen, speak with you the rest of the night with no problems. <laughs> but uh, listen, guys, Steve's channel, let me, let me just, let's go back and, uh, uh, I want you to, you know, I'm going to take you first. I'm going to pull the channel up over here real quick. Uh, uh, go back to Steve's actual channel here, but uh, share the screen with you guys there. Listen, subscribe to the work Steve is doing here. Uh, like I said, it's it's amazing work. Uh, JWTV. And, you know, also, Steve, if you could share with people that would like to support the work you're doing, uh, how could people support the work you're doing there on JWTV? All right, so we'll have the links and stuff. It's really news live. You say you have it posted. Uh, cash out JWTV7, uh, PayPal. We'll have those links below. Uh, it's Jackson2447 at gmail.com. Any exclusive footage, information, and if you wanted to somehow figure another way to help support the broadcast, you can just email there. So that's all the critical intel uh, we put on the channel here and we're doing this uh, like Monday through Friday, sometimes Monday through Thursday. So we're here, we're, we're doing this and we're seven, eight hours a day, just putting in time, actually looking into stuff and putting the analysis out and letting you see the reality for what it is. You make your own critical thought process in this action. Absolutely. So what I'll do, Steve's going to, uh, he's going to send me the information there. I'll have in the description below. So if you're watching the video here on Israeli News Live YouTube, which actually right now I'm sitting on Fact News Network, uh, but it'll be on Israeli News Live YouTube. Uh, or if you're watching an iConnect, either place, uh, fx.com, uh, you'll see it in the description below to where you could support the work he does via PayPal or, 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 or you can email Steve and, and discuss that with him directly. Uh, Steve, I, I, I want to thank you for taking the time out tonight to do this. Uh, you respond quickly, and uh, so hopefully people won't flood you with a lot of emails. But then again, what uh, that might be all right, too. You got, you'll have the weekend to take off, so you can answer a couple of hundred emails at one time. <laughs> uh, I'll do my best. I'll give, do my best to get to the email. <laughs> but I really appreciate you uh, bringing me on today, and definitely we'll have many shows in the future to come. Sounds great. God bless you, my brother. Thank you. And thank you guys for listening. And I uh, trust that y'all will be blessed by the information that you've heard tonight.